in Ezekiel chapter 1. Now it came to pass in the thirtieth year, in the fourth month, on the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captains of by the river Kebar, that the heavens were open and I saw visions of God. On the fifth day of the month, which was in the fifth year of King Jehoiakim's captivity, the word of the Lord came expressly to Ezekiel the priest, the son of Buzi, in the land of Chaldeans by the river Kebar, and the hand of the Lord was upon him there. Then I looked, and behold, a whirlwind was coming out of the north, a great cloud with raving fire engulfing itself, and brightness was all around it, and radiating out of its mist like the color of amber out of the midst of the fire. Also from within it came the likeness of four living creatures, and this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. Each one had four faces, and each one had four wings. Their legs were straight, and the soles of their feet were like the soles of calves' feet. They sparkled like the color of burnished bronze. The hands of a man were under their wings on their four sides, and each of the four had faces and wings. Their wings touched one another. The creatures did not turn when they went, but each one went straight forward. As for the likeness of their faces, each had the face of a man. Each of the four had the face of a lion on the right side. Each of the four had the face of an ox on the left side. And each of the four had the face of an eagle. Thus were their faces. Their wings stretched upward. Two wings of each one touched one another and two covered their bodies. And each one went straight forward. They went wherever the spirit wanted to go and they did not turn when they went. As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire, like the appearance of torches going back and forth among the living creatures. The fire was bright, and out of the fire went lightning. And the living creatures ran back and forth in appearance like a flash of lightning. Now as I looked at the living creatures, behold, a wheel was on the earth beside each living creature with its four faces. The appearance of the wheels and their workings was like the color of beryl, and all four had the same likeness. The appearance of their workings was as it were a wheel in the midst of in the middle of a wheel. When they moved, they went toward any one of four directions. They did not turn aside when they went. As for their rings, they were so high, they were awesome, and their rims were full of eyes all around the four of them. When the living creatures went, the wheels went beside them. And when the living creatures were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up. Wherever the spirit wanted to go, they went, because then the spirit went. And the wheels were lifted together with them, for the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. When those went, these went. When those stood, these stood. And when those were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up together with them, for the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. The likeness of the firmament above the heads of the living creatures was like the color of an awesome crystal stretched out over their heads. And under the firmament their wings spread out straight, one toward another. Each one had two which covered one side, and each one had two which covered the other side of the body. When they went, I heard the noise of their wings, like the noise of many waters, like the voice of the Almighty, a tumult like the noise of an army. And when they stood still, they let down their wings. A voice came from above the firmament that was over their heads. Whenever they stood, they let down their wings. And above the firmament, over their heads was the likeness of a throne, in appearance like a sapphire stone. On the likeness of the throne was a likeness with appearance of a man high above it. Also from the appearance of his waist and upward, I saw, as it were, the color of amber with the appearance of fire all around within it. And from the appearance of his waist and downward, I saw, as it were, the appearance of fire with brightness all around like the appearance of a rainbow in a cloud on a rainy day, so was the appearance of the brightness all around it. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. Amen. 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 In the, the prophetic uh, book of Ezekiel. So, as we know, uh, you know, after Solomon, the kingdom was divided into two, Judah and the, the ten tribes Israel. So, 
in around 70 BC uh, before Christ the Jew, uh, the Israelites they are completely gone because of the immoral behavior so God sent several prophets you can see here these are the prophets which God sent to warn the nation of Israel the ten tribes and but they never heard they never returned to the Lord so God let the nation of the, the ten tribes Israel let it go it's completely destroyed by the Assyrians now you know you can see here only the Judah the ten tribes they were uh, there so but by his grace and mercy so the same time when God allowed Israel the same king uh, you know Senegari he want to destroy the nation of Judah so we know in scripture so because he is a good king he prayed to the Lord and God to have mercy upon uh, the nation of Judah so God allowed so God extended around 100 more years for his grace let them uh, go so then uh, evil king Manasseh he was a evil king and uh, then Manasseh after Manasseh Amor also it's a, he, he, he reigned a short period he was a evil man he was a evil man and then Manasseh uh, Joshua, you know, he is a good king. He start with the the career. You know, he is a young man. So uh, then he understand the scripture. Then he accepted the law. Then he cleaned up the nation, cleaned up the nation, and uh, then he was a good king. But he was killed by the Egyptian, uh, yeah, Egyptian pharaoh. Then, you know. Uh, the other king, they are they lived in a short time or period of life, but uh, these kings are evil kings, evil kings. You know, then God sent several prophets. You know, God sent uh, Jeremiah, um, God sent Nahum. He won the nation of Israel, and also uh, God uh, healed up. You know, another prophetess. We you know. So God sent several prophets to warn the nation of the uh, the Judah to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ to throw all the idols and return to the Lord. But nobody bothers in those days. So, but then, so as God prom uh, prophesied through Jeremiah, if you read Jeremiah, Jeremiah warned the nation of Judah, return to the Lord, return to the Lord. Nobody bothers. You know, during the time of Jeremiah, so you can read in the, uh, probably around Jeremiah 24, 28 on the chapters, you can see a lot of false prophets in those days. So the false prophets, so except Jeremiah, except Jeremiah, all the prophets in those days, they said, you know, God won't let the nation go because we have that temple, because we have a, God, we, we worship the Lord. So they, the, the, the false prophets and the false teachers and the false uh, priests, they made the nation go away from the Lord. So then, he is the one prophet in those days. You know, God is going to destroy the nation. God is going to destroy the nation. So nobody bothered about Jeremiah. So people thought let Jeremiah go. He always speak evil words. Let it not hear his voice. You know always we want to hear the good news. We want to always uh, the words from uh, people to encourage. Oh you do good. You are doing good. Go ahead. You know we want to always you know today also when when we speak about repentance in the church people won't come. People always hear the encouraging words the encouraging words the good words so here because uh, nobody bothered Jeremiah's voice so God raised the king Nebuchadnezzar as he promised he as he prophesied through Jeremiah so the first deportation the first time when the king came uh, to the nation of Israel uh, sorry Judah and uh, he he, he changed the king and uh, he took uh, good uh, knowledgeable people as we know Daniel. Daniel also he went along with uh, the first deportation 
he took all the the knowledgeable people to the uh, nation of babylon but he left the king and uh, uh, and the uh, the people in that uh, city so again the king uh, uh, the first deportation is 605 then jeho king is the he, uh, he was the ruler and so he he along with the assyrian he joined with assyrians so he started to uh, rebel against the king of nebuchadnezzar so then he came again nebuchadnezzar he came again and he camped around the nation of judah and around uh, 597 bc he took over the uh, judah but he took all the vessels if you read in you know second king 24 you can read out all the history you know behind this so he took all the 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 king um, the, the king family king family and all the wealth of the king's treasure and the treasure from the uh, church treasure uh, you know the not church it's a temple temple treasures they they took everything to the uh, Babylon that's a second deportation so along with the second deportation Ezekiel also he went to Babylon so Ezekiel based on the you know scripture he you know first verse he said about 30 years 30 years so it is the year of his birth his age so based on that we calculated probably uh, Ezekiel may born around 622 uh, so he saw the good king 622 around um, Joshua and uh, then he saw the good king and all the rest of the king as the evil king so he saw some I don't know he probably is a is um, a teenager during the time uh, but all his lifetime he saw the bad kings so now he was deported to uh, Babylon so then he went to Babylon so these are the you know just we want to give outline so we know uh, Daniel is the contemporary to Ezekiel so we know uh, and the Babylonian kingdom is the Nebuchadnezzar so now they went uh, they took to the uh, Babylon the Ezekiel and all the things so as we saw the first deportation second deportation now the temple was there in the in Jerusalem uh, the king he didn't destroy the temple and he left only poor people poor people and Zedekiah uh, he made him as a king so the Babylon uh, the Nebuchadnezzar uh, um, his uh, what is his uh, what is that? uncle the king's uncle he made him as a king, Zedekiah, uh, uh, as the king, and he left with poor people. So then, now we are going to see the uh, Ezekiel. The prophecy is starting. So if you read, you know, if you take the prophecy in general throughout the scripture, around twenty-seven percent in the scripture is the prophecy. Most of them, one third is the prophecy, one third is history, one third, you know. You can see the, you know, the life, uh, the 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 kingship, all the 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 from Egypt. They started from the Abraham, all these the creation, everything. So one third is prophecy. So among the one third of the prophecy, seven hundred and thirty-five separate events, separate <laughs> events. Some of the events they quoted in probably around more than. Uh, 200 times you know for example the birth of Jesus Christ you know that's a event but quoted in lot of prophecy so already uh, 593 uh, events already happen so around 91 percent uh, sorry uh, 81 percent is came through actually so the rest of the 19 percent so it is about the second coming of Jesus Christ. So it is yet to come. And also 
after the second coming some of the prophecy about the thousand rains so lord the, the rest of the prophecy it's going to fulfill in future but if you read the whole book of ezekiel so you can able to see uh, eight, 83 times son of man son of man is the one of the you know name for jesus, jesus christ he is the son of man son of god so uh, we will see for, for why probably you know god he himself called son of man ezekiel he is the one uh, he was the one prophet god called him son of man 83 times you can you know find it out through search you know now we have a good search engines so now 74 times 74 times it's an amazing word then you know then you know you know some uh, some of the sometime when god god said you know we will see the first uh, chapter first few chapters is about the the destruction is going to come upon the nation of israel so god said you know these are the prophecy i am going to give you so when the prophecy come through when come prophecy pass when the prophecy will fulfill you will know i am the lord so the that is the the first uh, phase of the uh, i uh, then you know the second phase then god brought judgment to the pagan nation the surrounded nation so when god bring judgment to the pagan nation so the pagan nations, they know the Lord is God. He is Almighty God. So they know. So the third phrase, you know, God said, I am going to bring back you again. The, prof, pro, the promises they have God given to the nation of Israel. So when God fulfilled that pro, promises or prophecies, so the world will know God loved Israel. Then the, the nations will know. So when the first thing, first you know, you know, then they know, then the world will know. So around, around 74 times, I, I hope it will be um, 74. So the view of the God, so you know in this chapter, you know, most of them, most of the uh, uh, people, we won't read Ezekiel especially the first part first part you know it is very people used to say it's a very weird uh, you know most of them they won't uh, read and very few promises we will keep it and claim it so do you remember any promises you know one promise so stand in the gap so i am looking for a man to stand in the gap so that that is one word most of them we quoted. Dry bones. Yeah, dry bones. You know, people always think about dry bones. When you, when you think about Ezekiel, immediately it, it's like dry bone. Then? Ezekiel was seeing like a wheel. Yeah, we, we just saw this. Yeah, one. that's a, yeah. a wheel coming up. Huh? River. Yeah, the river. You know, the river. You know, we will see that's a, you know, lot of uh, interpretation. So we will see what is the real interpretation for that uh, thing. You know, uh, the... The angel took the man, he went the river like this, then it went like this, then full swim. So, so any other verse? Yeah, 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 it's, yeah, it's there, showers of blessings, yeah. So some of the verse, you know, though it's a very big book, and we can be able to read some of the, able to recollect, some of the few scriptures not really but if you see the if you read the whole book of ezekiel you know you can be able to see god judges his people you know you know this is to today's church to hear you know we always hear about mercy we always hear about love we always hear about uh, goodness blessings promises but if you read the whole book you know that's why you know, I, I always encourage people to take a book and read it out one stretch or you can uh, give a couple of days to read out the full book. Then you know the full picture of the 
the Lord. So when you read, why most of the people won't read Ezekiel is because you can see Lord of judgment. God punishes his people. We no need to hear God punish people. We want to hear God bless us. God bless us. God encourages. God want to give comfort. We want to hear that kind of verses. That's why we won't talk about the judgment. Nobody, you know, uh, you know, most of the American churches, we never heard about second coming. They will say, they will say, but they won't dig in that second coming. So you can hear about the second coming. Mag, Gog and Magog. You know, that's one of the famous chapters uh, in uh, Ezekiel. And then, God's judgment his people, his people, you know, God, you know, that is the, you know, we always, church, we always, we, we thought God judges the others, the, the, the outsiders, outsiders. But if you read the whole scripture, you know, God judges his people, his people. The, the, that's why, you know, in the New Testament, we'll, we'll read the judgment start in house of God, house of God, the first Judgment start in the house of God. So we should be aware. We should be ready to uh, face the Lord first. So then, God take vengeance. God take vengeance. God is the one. We should not take vengeance. You know, as the, you know, that's why, you know, Jesus said, I am sending you to the, uh, the sheep, to the wolves. wolves. Yeah, wolves. So, you know, why we no need to do any vengeance? Vengeance, God said, vengeance is mine. God will take the vengeance. So you and me, when we read all the scripture, we can able to, you know, some of the, you know, view of God. So he always brings things to judgment. Probably he will, he is patient today, but he will bring judgment then God will always restore his people. Though God judges his people, God always restore his people. He loves his people. He loves his people. He wants his people to be blessed. He wants to dwell among his people. Because of to clean them, God brings judgment and always God restores. That's the greatest blessing for the church and the outsiders. So we have a great hope. God always restore us. God always restore us. But not for the, the outsiders of the church. But now then, God, children, have a great and blessed future. We have a great future. You know, we can read in Ezekiel, the, when you read the book, so you can be able to find out God's children. God's children has a great future. We have a great life. Great life. Israel, the same way for the Israel. Israel has a great life. God brought uh, judgment to them. And also God will bring people, those who want to destroy the Israel, God will take vengeance. And also God will restore the nation of Israel. You can read all these things. So the three reasons for uh, for fall of Jerusalem. You know, these three reasons. You know, you can read out all the prophecy. You can able to see the three reasons. Three reasons. Idolatry, immorality, and ingratitude. Unthankfulness. Unthankfulness. You know, these three things, if God find, found, God will bring judgment. You know, just think a minute these things happening in church today you know idolatry we are changing focus from the Lord to something the materialism and also immorality you know churches church you know everywhere you can see even in India in America politics even sometimes it, it go worse than the politics uh, the church politics immoral behavior immoral behavior is happening today in all the churches and also ingratitude. Nobody want to thankful the blessings of the Lord. God blessed. God blessed. You know, these things happening. This happened in the nation of Israel. 
It's happening today. So we are, you know, why God wrote the book, uh, Bible? You and me to learn from them. But we don't want to learn from them. The Israel, the nation of Israel failed. Today, church is also failing. So God will bring judgment. So you can, we can read the, the book. God blamed three kind of people. The prophets, as I mentioned, the false prophets. And the priest, priest and the kings. You know, the leaders. When the leaders, if somebody let the people, uh, they put their idea among the people, it bring destruction to the uh, nation. So as the family, so uh, as a family, uh, husband is the husband is the king, you know, pro prophet. He is the priest. Husband, the leader of the home. So the uh, sisters also is there. Don't worry. <laughs> so. But God allowed the, uh, the husband to lead the family. Uh, and also we should intercede. We should intercede. We, should, we want to be a prophet. We want to lead our children the way which the Lord asks us to lead. So we are, we are there. When we fail, when parents fail, the children will fail. So because of the, you know, the families fail in in this nation, not only America, in the Christian families, the moral degeneration is started in the church. So we can read, you know, this is some of the outline. I'll give some more out outline. You know, if you read the whole scripture, you know, this is, I, I felt this is the key verse for the whole scripture. You know, this is the uh, promise which God gave us this year. But... This is the prof. Uh, you know, you can read out the throughout the the book of Israel. You know, I felt this is the key verse for the uh, the book of Ezekiel. So, what is the key word? David, my servant, shall be king over them. God is going to rule this year. God is going to rule this year, and also God want to dwell among us. He want to dwell. That is the heart heart of the Lord. God want to dwell among them. And then God want to make a covenant. We made, we, God made a covenant with us. You know, the covenant. And also, my tabernacle also shall be with them. Indeed, I will be their God and they shall be my people. That is the, you know, this is the center, not only for this book. You know, you can be able to see Throughout the scripture, you know, the heart of the Lord, the heart of the Lord is, He want to dwell among His people. You know, for example, take the, the first book, Genesis. God created Adam and Eve. And He want to dwell among them. Every day morning, He came down in the coolest day of the day. He came down, He talked with Adam and Eve. And He want to dwell among them. That is His heart. He want to dwell among you and me. That is His heart. But, um, uh, but when we are not allowed Him, so God won't dwell among us. And also, you know, you can read out the, the, the book of Ezekiel. So Ezekiel saw, the, the, we are going to uh, meditate, the glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord as, as we know, in, you know, when Solomon, he prayed, when he dedicated the temple, when they started to the worship, offer the sacrifices, Bible said, the glory of the Lord came upon the temple. Fill the temple. The temple was filled with the glory of the Lord. So, the, so because the glory, the Levites, they are not able to uh, do the sacrifices. The, the, the presence of the Lord is so strong when He dedicated the temple. That is the presence. But we can read... You know, when the glory, it started to depart. You know, we are going to read in Ezekiel, the glory departed. The glory departed in the east gate. It went to the east gate. And the glory went to the Mount Holly. And the glory left. And the glory left. You know, as we know in the scripture, the same glory came down again. And he walked in the temple in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. 
people rejected him people rejected him people said crucify him crucify him so the same glory he went in the east gate he came in the you know palm sunday and he went the same glory left from the mount olive he went to heaven so again the same glory jesus he will come again and he will enter into the east gate and he is going to be in our midst so that is the message for the book of ezekiel that's a key verse and uh, you know the outline when you you know uh, this i took it from the study bible this you know though i read the uh, book uh, you know it's easy i thought to take uh, from the study bible so if you read the book of ezekiel so the 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 whole passage is divided into four you know you can able to easily figure it out the first um, one to around uh, uh, 24 chapter you can able to see the prophecy against judah and jerusalem against god want to god is the judge he want to bring judgment to his own people own people when they went away from the lord god want to judge them now you can you can this the you know the the first phase of the the book of ezekiel but after 25th onwards when god bring judgment to the nation of israel you know the uh, this the you know i put a map for you know jerusalem this is the the 10 tribes uh, kingdom the israel they took the name israel the two tribes they have, they hold the name of juda so juda the capital is jerusalem so they are gone so only the the nation of israel uh, sorry the nation of juda is left so two times as we know the babylon king he deported he came deported people he left only poor people and the the king zedekiah and now when god bring judgment the prophecy we uh, the god bring judgment to the uh, nation of juda so all the neighboring nation you know the edomites and the moabites amon all these nation they are so thrilled they say they are they are so happy and also they sometimes they join with the the king Bob, babylon when they came and destroyed the nation they also jumped in and they also along with them they completely destroy they want to take destroy the god's children that's why they want to take vengeance they are they looking for the time because god remove his hand because of that you know not nebugat nature god took his hand from the nation of israel so god allowed the nebugat nature to take over and these nations they want to take vengeance against the uh, Ju- uh, Ju- the juda people and now god said see i am going to destroy i am going to bring judgment when god bring judgment god said about the uh, nebugat nature not god said about these people they jumped in god bring judgment to these people you know you and me to learn today when god god's minister see somebody god's children if they went away god may brought judgment to somebody if they went away from the lord but we should not propaganda that one we should not uh somebody want to uh, talk about that we should not jump into that and we should not uh, you know spoil their name you know god is the one he knows what to do for a person he will deal a people we should not deal god vengeance is god's so then god bring judgment you know all these chapters you know we can we will read uh, the judgment against the neighboring nations the third you can see the prophecy concerning the israel god want to restore his people not the other nations you know the all the other nation are completely gone you know today probably you know palestine you know palestine and the edomites you know all these this king you can see the name today the kingdoms are there but not the people of these own people 
you know, these kingdoms were replaced by the Arabs. You know, all the people, the Edomites are completely gone. Probably somewhere, not a uh, few, um, several thousands or, uh, you know, people may, may be there. But the, the nation was replaced by the, the um, Palestinians, um, Arabs. Arabs, they are replaced by the Arabs. But not Judah. You know, we can be able to see today, Israel. We can able to see the Jewish people. God is always keeping His promise. God always is keeping. He said, you are gone. But He restored His children. The same promises for today's churches. You know, today we are, we are able to see the churches. Are, people want to destroy the church. People want to replace churches. And uh, building mosque and building temple. God is watching. God is the one allowed this one to happen. Why God allowed the church to destroy? You know, because of the, the, the three things we saw. Idol, idol worship, the immorality, and the uh, unthankful, ungratitude. Yeah. So because of that, God allowed the church to be destroyed. God to take over the Hindus. God take over the churches by the Muslims. But God, the same Lord, will bring judgment. This has happened. This also will happen. God will bring judgment. We, we will see, you know, our own eyes, we will see that. We, today, they, they, they are thinking probably in America, when they build the churches, when they buy the churches and build the temple, you know, some we, we ourselves will grieve. How God will grieve? How God will grieve? You know, we can see when, when Israel, the nation of Israel, when God allowed them to destroy, so how God grieves for the nation of Israel. He's the one bring judgment to the nation of Israel. When he brings judgment, he grieves for the nation. That is the heart of the Lord. So God grieves for the church today. God wants the church because of the unfaithfulness. God brings judgment. When people went to buy temple, why buy churches and build temple today, they, they might say uh, they, the, 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 the evil they are worshipping, they are more power than the Lord. But God will definitely, if God bring judgment to us, these nations, the same God will bring judgment to this evil people. Evil people. So vengeance is God. Vengeance is God. Nobody can't escape from the sight of the Lord. So we can able to see this. And God restored only His children. God restored. When God restored the church. God restored the Christian families. <clears throat> Though we went away from the Lord. At some point, some point, God sent His prophets to bring us back. When we obey, trust and obey, God will restore God's children. So we can able to see, you know, most of the passages which we know is from these chapters. You know, because we always take the chocolates, you know. Uh, uh, so here, you can able to, the dry bone is here. Uh, and the shepherd, you know, good shepherd. Sometimes people used to preach about the good shepherd here, about bad shepherd and the good shepherd. And Jesus took the, 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 the promise from his, you know, the chapter. And he said in John 10, I am the good one. I am the good shepherd. So... Then, the vision of the future. You know, this is the, you know, it's a, you know, lot of commentary you can able to see about the, the future temple. The future temple. We will look into very detail. But, uh, so, we can he see here, you know, the, the last verse is, End with Jehovah Shalom. That is the key. Huh? Shama. Je sorry, Jehovah Shama. Jagawa Shama. God dwell, God wants to dwell among his people. That is his God. That is his God. So now today, you know, this is some of the outline. Um, you know, we, you can keep it when you read the chapters. So today, now we will look the chapter 1 today. So verse 1, now it came to pass in the 30th year, in the 4th month on the 5th day of the Month. You know, Ezekiel, he recorded very, very accurately about the date 
and time and the month. Thirtieth year. Thirtieth year, probably the age of Ezekiel. 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 The age. So, Ezekiel, in the thirtieth in year, he got the, the revelation from the Lord. He said, I was among the captives by the river Hebar. Hebar. So he was in the, in the, you know, the river Hebar. He was uh, uh, in the, it's the Babylon, one of the city. And they are, he is living among the captivities, you know, among the Israelites. So the, the Nebuchadnezzar, when he uh, deported the people from Jerusalem, and they put it into a colony in, uh, in Babylon. So they put them in the river Kebar, Kebar. Uh, you know, they put them, they are their colony. So now, in the colony, he is living there. And one day, God touched him. So he said about when? It is the 30th year. So what is the another 30th year? Who's, who was used by the Lord? Jesus. Jesus Christ. Jesus, you know, that he was waited for 30 long years. You know, he is the son of God. You know, sometimes we want to have patience. You know, but God, the son of God, the creator of the whole universe, he came down. And he was waited for his time 30 years. 30 years. And then in the 30th year, Jesus, he went for the baptism. It is a commission. It is the commission that day. So here, uh, the 30th year, he saw uh, the vision. So, you know, in the 30, if you read Numbers 4.3, could you read? From 30 years old and above, even to 50 years old, all who enter the service to do the work in the tabernacle of meeting. Amen. So, you know, he was, uh, as we know in the scripture, Ezekiel was the, the priesthood. He was the priest's son. So, in the, uh, in the son of Busi. So, he was, he suppose after 30 years, so the, the priest will wait, the Levites will wait to complete 30 years. So, when they, when they got 30, they started to worship in the temple. They can go to the temple and they can do uh, uh, sacrifices and they can do all the rituals. They can help the people, priest, priesthood. So now, Ezekiel, you know, he was in the captivity in the river uh, Seba, Kebar, Kebar. He was there and probably he thinking, now he is 30, he thinking, Lord, if I were in Israel, now I, if I were in Jerusalem, Lord, I will serve you. I serve you. That is his heart. I want, I will serve you. But Lord, now I am in captivity. So probably he might think about his call. His call, his call was the prophet. That is his call. Uh, sorry, his call was the priest. He, he remembered his, his priesthood. And he probably pondering about his call and asking the Lord, Lord, I, want, I am not able to serve you. I am not able to serve you. That is, should be his heart. Because his heart longing. So God given a different ministry for Ezekiel. Ezekiel, God said, Ezekiel, you are not a priest, you are, you are a, a priesthood. But I am today, I am making you a different ministry. The prophet. The prophetical ministry. You know, when somebody long for the gift of the prophecy, their heart and mind to be aligned with the Lord, to align the call of the Lord, God will give you that gift. That's a gift. So, his heart probably to serve people. To serve people. To help people. To bring them to the Lord. That should be his, his thought and heart. So, God understand his heart. And he made him a prophet for the nation. It's the greatest gift. You know, if he served uh, in the priesthood, nobody bothered. Today we don't need to bother. Because God gave that gift. 
because they long for the gift. You know, that's why, you know, the, throughout scripture, you know, Paul writes, we should long for the gift of the prophecy. We should long for the gifts. We should ask the Lord, I want to, I want to help. I want to help. You know, the call, which call? If you read a, a, a Ephesians chapter 4, 11 and 12, I forgot the reference to book. Yeah. Uh, 4, 11, 12. And he himself gave some to the apostles. Yeah, how many ministers, you know, in the church today? Apostle. Some prophets. Prophets. Some evangelists. Evangelists. And some pastors. Pastors. And teachers. And teachers. You know, five-fold ministry in the church. Five-fold ministry. You know, the, uh, you know, 1 Corinthians 12, 28. God has appointed these in the churches. So why God appointed? Can you read? For the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Yeah, that should be the, you know, motivation. To edify church? To? To equip. equip the church? To the saints. Uh, to, for the equipping of the saints of the work of the ministry. So yeah, work of the ministry. Work of the ministry. You know, this to be our motivation, not, you know, not self-glorification. You know, today all the ministry is self-glorifying, self-establishment. But the, the why God give the gifts? To establish the church, to edify the church, to edify, bring back the people to the Lord. Bring back and to equip the church. So, church, apostles, prophets, third teachers... And all the miracles and the gifts of healing, administration, variety. You know, today, if, you know, church, if church, they won't allow the prophets, you know, because of the lot of uh, false prophets, you know, uh, that's why it, it's happening today. But that is the bottom line. God's heart is, you know, if a church, if God's church, if we want to call as church, we need apostles, we need prophets, we need teachers, we need pastors, we need evangelists to evangelism. You know, we can, you know, within the fivefold ministry, so, you know, as a body, when called, called as body, we should understand our call. We should understand. And then we want to proceed, ask the Lord to give grace. You know, evangelists. You know, to evangelize people, to share Christ to somebody, probably relate to us, our, our co-workers. That is the evangelist. We, you know, today we no need to put the evangelist. You know, he is the evangelist. He is the apostle. Today people want to call everybody, I want to be, a, I am an apostle. That's a good name. You know, the people sometimes they put in the banner, uh, prophet is coming, evangelist is coming. You no need to name it. God knows who is evangelist, who, he is the one caller, God is the caller, who is the prophet, God knows. God knows who is the apostle. So when we went to him in his presence, God will reward him. That's why Jesus said, you are called by brothers, call each other the brothers, not to be called a pastors, you know, even pastors. So today, we should understand the call. So we have all, you know, the people, we are sitting here. We have the fivefold calling here. So we want to find out the calling which God called. We want to, you want to proceed, proceed. You know, Stephen, yes, he want to evangelize. He, you know, during the summer, he go and share the tracks everywhere. You want to evangelize them, evangelize. So we should find out our call. When we move forward to the call, God will reward us. God will reward us. When God called Paul, you know, God called Paul, if you read Acts chapter, so God, the first call, he never called, he is an apostle. God, when God spoke to Ananiya, go and uh, heal Paul, I let him be testify for my name. He will be a preacher. He will be an evangelist. That is his call. When he pressed the call, he worked hard for that call. When he dedicated, when he dedicated, he sacrificed everything for that call, the evangelistical call. Then God made him a pastor. 
God made him a, a, a prophet. God made him the pastor. So everybody, you know, we can get the same call. But how we are, you know, start with our ministry. Paul, Paul is the greatest example. God called him to, to share his testimony. That is a simple call. Simple call. You know, when somebody accepted Christ, the first thing we want to share our own testimony. Our own testimony. Our testimony is the matter. How we were there, the old life and the new life. Sometimes people always talk about their old nonsense and they won't talk about evil. You know, you know, when you talk about old thing, people, those who hear about the old thing, oh, they, they did a good thing. Sometimes they say, you know, because you enjoyed everything, let us also enjoy and come back. So we no need to give all these kind of rooms. So I was there, you know, I am blind. Now I am see. That's it. Now I am seeing. I was blind. He didn't explain all why, how he felt uh, when he was blind. You know, when Jesus uh, he killed the blind man. He he gave a simple message. What is that? I was blind. But now now I see. Now I see. That's a simple message. That is the message for a saved person. Saved person. Do you have a testimony? You know, we should ask ourselves. I see, I see, see means change of life. Life is the matter to change, thought to change, heart to change. So here, God called the prophet Ezekiel, 30, 30th year. So you and me, when we, we are under the hand of the Lord, when we are longing to preach the gospel, to help people to share the good news of Jesus Christ, at the right time, at the right time, probably Ezekiel 30, 30, 30 years. For us, probably, maybe children's for uh, 13, 13, or 14, or 20. You know, God is the one. God knows. At the right time, at the right time, God will use. God will use. But until then, we want to under His hand. You know, you know that's why a lot of False prophets, false prophets today, you can see, you know, those days also a lot of prof false prophets in Ezekiel time and the time of uh, um, Jeremiah and Isaiah, all the times when you look throughout the Bible and the history, the Old Testament, a lot of false prophets. False prophets are the most familiar in those days. You know, because they are comforting people. They are giving comfort to the people. But when real prophets, they want the people, and real prophets, they will be hated by the people. But the right time, God will use the prophet. So here, so here, in the 30th year, the word came uh, to uh, the prophet Ezekiel. So here you can see here the vision and the word. That's a two things. You know, he saw he saw the things and also he's hearing the the voice from the Lord. It's amazing gift. You know, vision. You know, sometimes we forgive the verses, but the 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 picture. That's why you know picture language. It's a picture language. You know, when you read Ezekiel one. You, you know, sometimes people think, oh, what is, what is that? I couldn't understand. Because we need, it's a vision. It's a vision. And the word, the Holy Spirit is the teacher. So he used to make the, he, if he give the only the vision, the prophet even, he may not understand. Understand. But the vision, the word also to come. You know, sometimes God gives the vision. Vision. We should be very careful whether uh, that is warning for us or it is a blessing. So we should ask the Lord to give the counsel proper understanding. You know, false prophets always they prophesy. You know, today for example, you know about the election. I don't know, more than 99% uh, people they predicted it's failed. 
it is false prophecy false prophecy you know uh, you know in my indian election so god will fulfill god will fulfill the prophecy which god given to us so here the the uh, vision and the word and now he saw the uh, voice then i looked and behold a wild wind was coming out of the north is coming so he is in the you know probably the vision probably he is in the uh, judah he was here in uh, babylon he was there he was the capti uh, uh, um, captivity there and now he saw the vision in the coming judgment of jerusalem so he saw the wild wind is coming from the north not a refer to the um, the babylon the babylonian kingdom you know the same prophecy is already prophesied by jeremiah if you read uh, jeremiah 1 uh, 14 to 15 the north is often associated god's judgment through israel's powerful enemies though god is sent already prophesied through jeremiah and uh, now he is again he is reconfirming through the prophet ezekiel so you know as we said in our i said it's a two deportation happened but still the jerusalem was there the temple was there so the people those who in the captivity you know among them there are a lot of false prophets so the false prophets they said you know we have temple temple is there so god never allowed the temple to be destroyed that is the one of the the thought of the <coughs> the false prophet you know that's a good actually you know god never he is almighty god he is omniscient he is omnipotent he is almighty he never destroy his own temple uh, own throne he said you know he i am dwelling there so god already promised to solomon so the promise but you know because they took the uh, uh, promises and the false prophet you know we i we want to understand the false prof prophets so now this is the fact this is the fact is what is the fact god dwells in jerusalem god dwells in his temple so now the false prophets in you know uh, uh, during the time of ezekiel they said you know we will god will raise by miraculously god will raise somebody and we will all go again they will come israel will uh, judah will raise up and they will invade the babylon and they will we will go to jerusalem for worship very soon that's why the false prophet they said but uh, but god's and also the pro false prophet said see jeremiah jeremiah he prophesied for complete destruction complete jeremiah prophesied uh, god is going to destroy the nation of israel completely 100% but they pro they say the people live in the babylon they say see temple is there we have a hope temple is their hope you know instead of you know somebody shifted their hope to a uh, uh, things which we see that will be demolished we are you and me to be our hope is the lord christ to be hope you know three things what is the three things faith <coughs> hope and love so the hope we won't talk about much about hope but the you know these people they said we have temple temple is there worship is going on so god will by miraculously he will deliver us to uh, go to the uh, jerusalem for worship but only the pro so ezekiel he heard all these false prophet prophecy when he was in um babylon babylon now god showed reconfirm the prophecy which god spoke to jeremiah no it's coming the coming god is going to it's a wild wind you know when it's a wind come completely destruction completely destruction you know tornado people are saying you know it's completely destroy completely god said the first vision you know probably he probably want to 
give good words to the people, the first vision itself, it's not a good for the people. It's a great warning. I, I looked and behold a wild wind is coming out the north. Great cloud with ranging fire engulfing its fire. It is for destruction. Fire comes, complete destruction. You know, clouds, the presence. He probably amazed. He was amazed. Who is bringing destruction? The cloud is coming. The presence of the Lord. God is the one bringing destruction to his own town, to his own temple. Temple, that is amazing. That is amazing. You know, God, the, the great cloud with ranging fire engulfing itself. It's a, you know, two combination. Two combination. Sky and the God allowed, God allowed the neighborhood nature he destroyed. So here, and radiant out the mist like a color, amper out of the midst of the fire. So it is, God said, it is going to come very soon. Complete destruction. But the people around uh, uh, Ezekiel, they said, we have a hope. We have a hope. That's a false prophecy. False prophecy. So now, you know, the, 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 the first vision. You know, it's a, it's a beautiful vision. So here, you know, you can see, uh, read about the four living creatures. Four living creatures. So, uh, so can you read uh, five? Also oh. from, also from within it, it came the likeness hmm. of four living creatures. Okay. Then uh, read. Uh, okay. Nine. Their wings. Oh, sorry. Ten. As for the likeness of their faces, each had the face of a man. Each of the four had the face of a lion on the right side. Each of the four had the face of an ox on the left side. And each of the four had the face of an eagle. Amen. So this is the, you know, he saw the wind is coming, the cloud, the fire is coming from the north. And also he saw the four living creatures. Four living creatures. The four living creatures, they have four different faces. The face one is the the face of a man and face of the lion and the uh, fox face of oxen and the eagle so that's the four creatures four creatures he saw so if you read revelation you can able to see the four creatures in revelation so it is in the presence of the lord so the lion and you can see the uh, the man yeah, uh, yeah, calf and the lion. The so four creatures in the presence of the Lord. So you know, Revelation four, uh, John is in in spirit. He is in the spirit. He is in heaven. He is in heaven. So here, I, uh, Ezekiel he saw the vision. You know, vision is the when he was alive, he saw his spiritual eyes is open. He is not sleep. Sleep is the dream. So vision. He saw, he is standing in the uh, Babylon, but he saw vision. But uh, John is in spirit in heaven. So, so what it tells, what it tells. So now, Ezekiel, uh, sorry, Ezekiel, he thought about his church, uh, the temple, the presence of the Lord. When Solomon, he prayed, the presence of the Lord is there in the temple. And John he saw in the presence of the Lord in the heaven. But here the, the presence of the Lord is where? In Babylon. Babylon. He saw the vision. You know it's a vision. So what it tells? What it tells? Uh, uh, God is everywhere. God is everywhere. You know those people, the people they thought only Jerusalem. You know, in those days, you know, sometimes that's why people used to think if we go to church, we are done with that week. That is not. That is, you know, that is the Old Testament theory. 
God is everywhere. Jesus spoke to the Samaritan women. You can worship the Lord everywhere. Everywhere. You know, that's why it's about the wheels. You know, wheels, you know, the wheels can go everywhere. God can, you know, He is here right now. Because we are sharing, we are, we are talking about Him. He is listening. He is, he is, he is, he understands what is going on. He knows everything. So, but here, the presence of the Lord. So, the presence of the Lord. So, it means the presence, the, the presence of the, the creatures. And also, uh, you can read, you know, he, uh, when the four cre creatures living in the, in, uh, sorry, Ezekiel, he saw four wings, four wings. But in Revelation, you, ca you can see how many wings? It's a six wings, six wings. And also, you know, I, uh, you know, when I was uh, noticed, so if you read uh, Ezekiel 10, 14, can you read Ezekiel 10, 14? Each one had four faces. The first face. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, please carefully read here. Okay, uh, read first. Each one mm. had four faces. Mm. The first face was the face of a cherub. Cherub. This so, first face in uh, Ezekiel 10, 14 is the cherub. So here, it is not there, right? That is not there, okay. The second face, the face of a man. So second face is the man, where is it? The first okay, the face of man, okay. Mm. The third, the face of a lion. So the third, it's here and he also saw in the same mission in 10, lion. The four, and the fourth, the face of an eagle. The fourth of eagle, the fourth of. So what is the replaced? In the, the vision? Ox. ox. So cherubim is replaced by the ox. You know, you know, you know in the, you know, presence probably, probably when Christ come, when the presence of the Lord came, first time, you know, he came, he was here, but he came as a, as a human man. He came, uh, John said about Jesus Christ, see, look the, lamp of, the lamp, lamp of God, lamp of God. So don't look again, he was the lamp of God. He is the Almighty now. Almighty, his presence will bring destruction. His presence will bring the presence of the Almighty God to destroy. You know, that's why I understand probably, you know, then, you can, you know, if you take the four gospel, four gospel, people used to say about Matthew. Matthew, when you read the four gospel of Matthew, you can be able to see, you know, get a flavor, Christ is the king, is the king of Jew. He always referred to the Old Testament. He always quote, he, he always proclaimed Christ is the king. But when you read Luke, Luke always is the son of man. Is the son of man. He always he want to uh, live among Gentiles. You can read Lord about the Gentile. He went to Zacchaeus. You can read, you know, or he, you know, Lord of these kind of uh, quote. You can be able to read in Luke Gospel. So it means Luke want to project Christ as the ox. Uh, uh, sorry, son of man. Son of man. And Mark, if you read Mark, is project Christ as the, you know, ox for the sacrifice. He's going to, his man came to sacrifice for us, for us. And also, you know, and uh, then if you read uh, John, John is a, you know, you know, he, he always is the eagle. He's, he saw Christ. In the above, the word of God. That's why he started in the John 1, 1 itself. The, the, the word became flesh. Dwelt among us. Dwelt among us. He saw it's a eagle. Probably, the, the, you know, always, all the presence of the Lord, always gives some revelation to his people. About him. About him. He don't want to give some... You know, to show some weird stature, to
to man, you know, to be scary. No. God wants to give a deeper revelation to people. So, we saw God, Christ is the first coming. The first coming is, is, is a son of man to take out all the sins. And the second coming, he bring the glory, glory of the Lord, the serving, the serving to destroy all the destruction. And also, you know, if you see the wings, see the wings, so the, um, the wings, you can, if you able to see, they touch to one another. They touch, oh, you know, see, imagine like that. You know, if you imagine, you will be sometimes scared, you know, because of the faces. You know, all the wings, if you, if you say, everything together, together. So, you know, to, it, 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 it gives some uh, insight to us. You know, Acts 2, Acts 1 and 2, they were together. They were together. They bring the presence of the Lord. The Holy Spirit came. So that together, oneness is very important. So though all four uh, creatures, you know, different, different perspective. You know, lion has a different, eagle has a different perspective, man and the oxen, they are both of different characters. But they come together, together. But together, you bring the presence of the Lord. Presence of the Lord and uh, and here touched one another and covered their bodies, covered their bodies. So you can't be able to see the whole revelation of the Lord, whole revelation. If somebody said, I know God fully means he is done, he, he don't know anything, covered. No, we can't know, nobody know, even point one person we don't know about the Lord. For him, Lord and Lord, you know, see, imagine, one word he created the light. We can't be able to comprehend our brain. We, can't, we have a small brain. Our brain can't be able to comprehend which the Lord speak and his, his, uh, his, his knowledge. We can't. So we should understand our own uh, understanding. Our own understanding. But it's covered. It's, a pre it's covered. It's covered. And also in the presence of the Lord. In the presence of the Lord we should cover with our dresses. <coughs> you know, today, you know, sometimes when people uh, in the worship service and the, they used to wear all these kind of, you know, that's not abomination for myself. You know, you should not be in the presence of the Lord, uh, you know, wearing all these unclean dresses. God is holy. God is holy. He never compromised his character. He is always holy. When he appeared to Moses, Moses couldn't understand his presence. He threw his uh, sandals out. God is holy. So the angel, they covered. You know, you know the same picture you can read in Isaiah 6. You know, when Isaiah, God opened the spiritual eyes of Isaiah, so that he saw the cherubim, the cherubim. So the two wings, they covered themselves. They covered themselves. Because they couldn't be able to see the light. You know, when you stand in the bright light and when you look upon the sun, you can't be able to <coughs> see the light. So you can't be able to see. Nobody can see the Lord. He is almighty. You can be able to see all these, you know, the lightning, all the flashes, firing. You know, all it, it resembles the presence of the Lord. The presence. Bible said, He is the a Hebrew writer, he writes, God is the consuming fire. Consuming fire. He is full of fire. He is full of love. He is full of holiness. He is full. He is full. His presence. His presence. And also his appearance. And he saw all the four creatures. So the, all the four creatures, they went together. They went together. And they 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 wherever whatever God said, they will do the work job done. They can't do anything other than that. You know that's why when Gabriel he came to the um, Zachariah, he appeared. He asked about why, how it happened, because he didn't get any revelation. He shut his mouth. That's it. So 
the angels, they are the ministers for the God. So they will get the command from the Lord, they will execute the work. So they will execute. That's why you know all the the four um, the the four creatures they are going the same direction. It means the direction they are getting from the Lord. It's a direction. The direction to give God. And also, you can see the wheels. You know the wheels. You know, if you have this kind of wheels, you can go this direction or you can come back. But you know, if you read here, the wheels has, you can go this direction, come back, and also they can go this direction, this direction. So God can go anywhere. You know, that's the wheels. You know, you know, you know, you know JBQ question. God is the, he is the omniscient. He can, he, he can omni present. He can, you know, he can be there everywhere because of the wheels. He's not a, he's a mobile God. He's a mobile, not stable in Jerusalem. You know, that's a Jewish thought. He's in Jerusalem. He's Jerusalem. You know, today Christian thought, he's in temple. Temple. You know, that's why when we went to the altar, we, we removed the shoe. But God is everywhere. We should always to have the reverence. So, so they have the wheels and go everywhere. And they also have the wings. They can, they can walk and they can fly. He can be there. You know, God, you know, if you read in Psalm 139, when I go to heaven, he also be there. When I dig, dig down in the sea, he will be there. That's all wings. You know, he can go everywhere. Without his presence, nobody can be able to hide himself. Hide himself. So all the wings, all the wings, you know, the animals, it is that animals has the wings means it is from the Lord. It is God's present. Nobody, he can go anywhere. He can do anything. He can do anything. And uh, because the lion, he is the king of the beast. King of the beast. And also, it's a wheels and the spirit. The Wherever the spirit want to go, they went. That is the leading of the Holy Spirit. And the spirit is the one leading them. We will finish it very fast. So then, among the top, he saw a throne. That is amazing. This is the presence of the Lord. So among the, when I, uh, when 24 onwards, when they went, I heard the noise of their wings. So when they, because of the presence of the Lord, they are going with the presence of the Lord. All the angels, when they come, they are coming with the presence of the Lord. That's a miraculous happening. Then you hear, you know, above the ferment over their heads was the likeness of the throne in the appearance like a suffering stone. The likeness of the throne was a likeness with the appearance of a man high above. Above everything. He is on top. He is above everything. He is above everything. He is almighty God. He is above all his creations. He is above Serubim. He is above all the, uh, the, the worldly things. He is above all the angelic beings. He is above all. He is above all. He is sitting on the throne. He is sitting on the throne. And his throne is moving everywhere. Moving everywhere. And, uh, and he said, when I saw the presence, you know, he's above, appears, yeah, man. See, it's a man. The Lord is a person. He's a person. Word came, a person. Christ. Christ. A man, appearance of man, high above it. And uh, he's, he's, you can see the, uh, the presence of the Lord. Then, the, uh, up, this was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. You can see the glory. You know, Ezekiel, you can see a lot of words about the glory of the Lord. Glory of the Lord. Glory of the Lord. It is the presence of the Lord. When he saw, this is amazing word. When I saw it, I fell on my face. I heard voice on the speak. He can't able to stand. He fell down and worshipped the Lord. He fell down. 
that is his presence that is his presence you know sometimes sometimes when preachers preach they claim themselves above all the things revisions you know jesus came up here i saw wherever you can read in scripture as far as i know in the scripture daniel when he saw the lord he couldn't be able to stand god is the one the angel said son of i give strength he couldn't be able to stand the same thing happened in ezekiel he couldn't be able to stand the presence of the lord because he is almighty god his presence itself so you know sometimes when you when we come to the presence of the lord you can able to feel the presence you can able to feel the presence then the great reverence will come the presence always leads us to worship not music not loud voices not songs and singing you know singing singing sir you know singing you know today we are you know we want to know singing is not a worship today we are replaced it singing it's a song it help us to prepare our mind to worship the lord that is the important this is not the worship you know if you put a lot of music oh lord come he won't come unless you are not holy he should he is a holy man he is a holy god he is a holy god unless your heart is not prepared unless the 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 stage is not prepared he won't come he is a holy god he is a holy god when somebody come in the presence you can cheer you know not dance you won't dance you know it's a lot of, you know controversy that's why i want you to understand today dancing and all these things they said it's a uh, you know it's a worship a real worship you can see the presence of the lord without your without your you know knowingly and knowingly your heart will melt you feel the presence of the lord your tears roll down and it grew great reverence in the presence of the lord that leads to worship that leads to worship that's why confession confession and worship so today we replaced everything so here he saw the presence he fell down he fell down because the presence of the lord so today you know as we read the first chapter today you and me to long as ezekiel uh, king uh, the the prophet ezekiel he long the prophet to 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 serve the lord if you and me have the longing at the right time god will use us god will use you and me to be a prophet for this nation so you and me to long for the nation to pray and god surrender our life and to lead understand whenever you read the scripture it give a deeper revelation deeper revelation not knowledge you know head knowledge you can memorize lot of things that's head knowledge but the revelation the head knowledge come to hear the heart the heart so here the the prophet he couldn't able to stand and he was let's close our eyes and